Hello friends, welcome back to This Is The Police. About to begin day 27, we're getting close to one-sixth of the way through the game. And really, I've been playing for quite a long time. I'm quite surprised by how long this game actually is. Stuffed toys purchased for the orphanage found to be toxic. Mayor Rogers displeased with police department. What a fucking surprise that is. Price of alcohol to increase by 60%. That's, uh, that's aggressive. But it might stop some of the crimes. Robins and Nordlander got food poisoning and expect to be in the hospital for the next five days. Fucking hell. That'll be that banquet we got for them. Jesus. It's my dog's birthday and I want to spend a day with her at the park. You have 700 professionalism. How the fuck does someone with 700 professionalism ask for a day off because it's her dog's birthday? Sorry, quiet rage going on here. We're getting towards the point where we get new records, I think. We get them on the 14th. I'm not sure what date it is today. I think it's about the 10th. Your friend sent you your share from the sale of automatic weapon. 4,700. Yeah, we can share that. Keep everyone sweet. Vandalism at the Corn Monument. An elderly woman has reported that children wearing hoodies have painted rude words on a nearby ornament. Ornament. Ah. Well, I do apologise. Go. Cool. Right. Snowball. Get your ass out there. <laughs> Suicide threat at Atticus Tower. A teenage girl slipped past the skyscraper guards and found her way onto the roof. She's now standing on the edge. A guard called the police and said she, he was afraid to approach the girl. He could tell that the girl is dangerous. Purdy and Simpson. Proceed onward, friend. Suicide threat at the bridge. Everyone wants to commit suicide today. That'll, that'll be the result of the alcohol cost going up by 60%. A trucker saw a teenage boy climb over the safety fence in the middle of the bridge. The driver stopped and tried to talk to the boy, but the boy became hysterical, screaming, Don't come any closer or I'll jump. Grant's got a resting bitch face motherly look about her. She'll, she'll have him in in no time. Day 27, $84,000. Almost a fifth of the way there in less than a sixth of the time, so making good progress, I think, money wise. We didn't even need to check that, we knew Stowell would be fine. Purdy and Simpson, reckon they'll be fine too, and they are. Grant is at the bridge. Hit and run in city centre. Grant's reporting back. Defender caught. Presumably no one hurt. Yep. So, three for three so far to begin day 27. Hit and run, city centre. A pedestrian said she, that he saw a dark pickup careen onto the sidewalk and sidewalk said walk and hit two teenage skateboarders. He didn't even slow down, just smeared those poor kids and kept driving straight ahead. The drunk freak. We've got three cops coming back. So we'll send three cops out to this one. Animal assault in the suburbs. We'll wait for Purdy and Simpson to get back, which is now. And we'll read this. We received a rambling call from a man who claims that he returned home from work to find a huge cat sitting on his doorstep crouching and ready to attack. It was growling like a Tyrannosaurus stuttered the victim. Purdy gets to go alone on that one, I think. Wait for Grant to get back. Oh. Okay, the hit and run is more serious than they thought. We're gonna have to send Simpson just by herself. And then Grant can 
maybe not do this on her own. A pensioner looked out her window and saw a crowd of naked people running through the streets. She didn't know what to think and called her neighbour, who had also witnessed the outrageous spectacle. The women together called the police and demanded an immediate explanation. May have to wait. I don't think... Mm. Okay, this is an issue. Grant, this is a situation that calls for five cops. However, you're going this one alone. Thanks to food poisoning. I don't think they would have gotten back in time. Animal assault. Hit and run reports. The reported Catasaurus Rex is just an ordinary neighbour's pet. And poses no threat to anyone. Report on the hit and run. Claim those points, guys. Everyone is, of course, back now. Ah, excellent. Well, it seemed like it might have been a fairly dangerous situation, but, you know. Grant, ever the professional, just handled it on her own. The Sands need help, out in the road. A guest of Mr. Sand is leaving Freeburg, but some punks somehow learned the route and prepared an ambush. It's turning into a shootout. We need any help we can get. You know, I have just the three people for that. God Bomber is pretty much the worst cop on the force, and he's still 205 points of professionalism. We're doing quite well on that front. The Sands need help at the ice rink. Looks like Varga let a bunch of angry punks off the leash. And now they're brawling with our men right outside the rink. There's a few dozen people in the brawl, so the police better step in and cool things off. There go all our ranking officers. Cook, Simpson and God Bomber are on the way back. We have a force of six today, and all six of them are currently out dealing with Mafia issues. Destruction of property at the Live Good Mini Market. Supermarket manager Sonia Franco reports that an elderly man overturned the vegetable table and is refusing to pay for damages. He tried to escape, but store managers Store guards managed to detain the offender. This seems very straightforward. God bomber. Turntail. Ooh. Unlawful assembly at City Hall. People wearing white caps have gathered outside City Hall, demanding a return to the good old days of segregation and slavery in Freeburg. Ugh. The crowd chanted, White is right. Some were seen carrying revolvers. How long do we have? We have seven seconds. They're not going to get back in time. Cook. Simpson. SWAT team. Paddy wagon. This is the dangerous one. But unfortunately, you guys are going it alone. No frames found on the homicide. Give it one more day. Destruction of property report. God bomber on his. Oh, yeah. Okay. I would normally send Stovall, but this is a huge white supremacy gig. God bomber's report on destruction of property. God bomber nailed it. See, he's a good cop. He has a terrible name, but he's a good cop. Hurry, Grant, Cook and Simpson are out dealing with the White is Right assembly. Nailed it. Well done, guys. That was about a non-automatic weapon. Let's uh, ask the Mafia to sell that, <laughs> as is our want. 
so that was quite a busy day. Oh. The war is over. Vickers Varga has been defeated, and his army of street punks and thugs has been broken. No one knows what happened to Vickers himself, but it doesn't matter now. He'll never show his face in this city again. Cutscene, maybe? Shift B with Pongdana at the helm. He's Oh, he's got two stripes. Shift B now looks really good. The Golden Bird reporting that zoo animals are starving. Toilet stolen from the City Hall. And the fact. Freeburg's number one toilet paper. Freeburg hosts the greatest lasagna in history. Well, feed it to the fucking zoo animals then. We'll all be fucking happier. I think we're going to get a cutscene here. I hope we're going to get a cutscene after... Well, that's a pretty major piece of storyline. No, nope, apparently not. Murata, some friends of mine asked me to help out at the animal shelter. They're badly short-staffed. Can I have the day off? Shift B is quite stacked. But no, not for that. Uh, if I'd known you were going to be the only person asking, then maybe. But Swings and roundabouts, guys. Swings and roundabouts. That's not what I was trying to do. I was trying to get us some Beethoven. So, no storyline. We, we've just reached quite a an important junction in the story, I would say. Not junction, but juncture, rather. That's the word I'm after. And we're not getting any cutscenes for it. A man took his dog out for a walk, and upon returning home noticed a crouched, hooded figure fumbling with a car at the end of the street. That might just be a guy who's playing around with his car, to be fair. Hongdana, take Jorgensen. I already like Pong Pongdana. He just looks very unassuming. Oh, but he can't deal with this himself, apparently. Right. Ozaki and Tsubaki. Hostage situation in the city centre. This could be serious. A man with dilated pupils boarded a bus and then pulled out a gun. Possibly fake. He's demanding that the bus immediately leave for Africa. Good fucking luck with that. Uh, Vandal, Kemp, Kubilius. You can have the SWAT team. I think there's a chance you won't need it, but we'll see. Report on the attempted carjacking. All good. What's the situation? Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Civilians unharmed. No issues. Abduction at the True Color Hotel. An anonymous call came in. Hello, I have information about a missing girl named Lisa Pettigrew. I kidnapped her a week ago, but now she's ready to go home. You can find her at the True Color Hotel, room 180B. You'd better hurry if you want to see her alive. SWAT team. Pongdana. You take Vandal. You take Shaw. And you take Jorgensen. And you head off.
let's hope this one isn't as serious as it sounds. Armed robbery at the gas station. A passerby reported that he saw a motorcyclist pull up to a gas station carrying a gun. He entered the station without removing his helmet. He then heard screams and gunshots. Okay, this is uh. Serious Crime Saturday, apparently. These guys are on the... Mm. Ozaki, Kemp and Kabilius. Let's leave Tsubaki and Murata back in case someone needs a bit of support. Room 180B is located on the top floor of the hotel. A red ball is hanging from the doorknob and the words written on the ball read. Read. Call the bomb squad. Oh shit. Enter the room through, through the hotel's roof, break down the door, get a room key, break down the door. Inside is a standard motel room complete with bed, bedside table, telephone and TV. The curtains are drawn, sitting on the bed is a girl strapped with explosives. Red and yellow wires protrude from the bottom. Cut the yellow, cut the red, exit the room, evacuate the hotel, wait for the bomb squad. Guys, we just have to wait for the bomb squad. It worked. That was risky, but not as risky as cutting one of the wires. Ozaki, Kemp and Kubilius are almost at the armed robbery. That seems to have gone well. No one hurt. Okay. Disorderly conduct at the Octopus Restaurant. At the end of a high school reunion party, a naked young man entered the restaurant with an object in his hand vaguely resembling a gun. He was behaving very erratically, then jumped up on a table and started threatening the restaurant's patrons. Okay, Shift B has a dream team now. Pongdana, Vandal, Shaw, and Jorgensen. It's not really a dream team. It's kind of a, an all over the place team, but still. If they get results, I'll be happy. A massive fight at Christopher G. Sands Ice Arena. And we have five cops to deal with it. Ooh, it's a potential for 10. Freeburg lost to Pittsville 12 to nothing. Local van fans are furious. They're screaming, swearing at the visiting team as they retreat to the locker room. Himself, enraged by the insults, the visiting team's captain threw his stick and struck one of the fans in the face. A massive brawl erupted, involving the fans, players, referees and even the concession hawkers. We've got 35 seconds to um, react to that, so... If we can get the four guys back in time, nothing can be seen from the street, but the screams and sound of smashing plates can be heard from within. Go through the main entrance, use the megaphone, the restaurant is surrounded. Try to enter through the back door. Let's just go through the front. When the young man spots the police, he grabs a woman and puts a gun to her head. He yells something unintelligible and squeezes his hostage's neck. The gun appears to be a toy. Pounce on the criminal, casually approach the assailant, let us all calm down and talk this out. Talking it out, clearly the best idea. 25 seconds for these guys to get back, that should be doable. Yeah, they're about a third of the way there in 5 seconds, so... Well... Yeah, it's probably closer to 20, but... You know, if they don't get caught in traffic, then... Assault in the city centre. We've got everyone back, we're going to send like 6 people out to this. Send three ranking officers. We'll send Kemp, Subaki, and Murata. And we'll also give them. That's oh, Jorgensen. What Murata? We're keeping Team Asia together on this one. That leaves us Shaw, Kabilius, and Jorgensen to deal with the assault which has happened near the city centre. A taxi driver called from a payphone, attempt, complaining that a violent customer refused to pay the fare and attempted to leave the car. 
When the cab driver locked the door, the man went berserk, broke the car safety screen and attempted to strangle the driver. The driver managed to escape, but the assailant remains locked inside the car. Mm. Shaw, you can stay back. We'll give you Jorgensen and Kabilius. Yes, it's two cops from the bottom end of our scale, but you know, they're they're very good. We haven't failed a case today, in fact. I have a report on homicide. Three new frames. Ah, and these new frames all point to the boy doing it. Okay. Report on the assault. Everyone fine? Of course. I'll send you Shaw, but that's all we can do. If you'd waited another three seconds to call for backup, we could have given you Kabilius and Jorgensen as well, because they're going to be just sitting around. It should be an option to send other cops out, even if it's just slightly later. That is 3am. The day has officially ended. We're waiting on the results. Massive fight, let's see. No one hurt. Oof. A perfect day. A perfect day full of serious, serious crimes. Shift B has, over the last two shifts, just become the superstar shift. I feel quite comfortable ending the day there. We won't have Robins Was there someone else? I feel like we were missing someone else. There were two names mentioned. Was it Nordlander? I think it might have been Nordlander. Ozaki, you can come and work shift A tomorrow. Goldenberg, drunk student falls from fifth floor window. Injured. Accident at the reservoir. Water runs out in two days. And this fall, record rainfall in Freeburg. That's that's going to be on the papers for the next episode. But until then, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'd love it if you'd like, subscribe, comment, all the good stuff. And I will see you guys tomorrow, probably, for more This Is The Police.